If I could holler just like a mountain jack. And as I said, one of the things that I that I really am trying to do when I'm playing all this music and, and all this is uh, turning people onto the music of the old guys. Uh, that, as I said, 1926 to 32, this, the recordings made then, you know, it's just those, those guys are the masters. And um, one of the things I've been able to do um, is, is uh, do a couple of instructional videos where I try to be as accurate as possible, uh, getting getting each note that these guys were playing as they played it. You can you can never do it perfectly, but you know you can do it better or worse. <laughs> and so <laughs> I've tried to be as slavish as possible and get it, just playing it again and again. If I don't know what the note was, I don't let myself get up till I do know what the note is. Play the thing, play this little these little passages again and again. And I did that um, on Stefan Grossman's guitar workshop. There's uh, one that's the guitar of Blind Boy Fuller, um, which is out, and, and also uh, one on Blind Lemon Jefferson. And at some point, um, I'll be doing a, a couple of other guitarists as well. I'll, I'll be doing Lonnie Johnson, and I'll be doing the early recordings of Reverend Gary Davis, and um, and I'll also be doing another Blind Blake. There's a Blind Blake uh, CD, I mean um, DVD out now, an instructional video. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to do another one with with different tunes. Um, that one was done by Woody Mann, and I'm going to do one with with tunes he didn't put on there. Because Blind Blake is 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 my out and out all time, you know, hero. Well, when I first uh, started playing professionally, I I was going to college, and I I lasted two years. I was totally miserable, studying uh, physics, and had no idea why I was there. Um, it's just it was just sort of the next thing, but I really wasn't that interested in what I was doing, and uh, I was going to a school that was very difficult. And so, you know, if you weren't really passionately interested in what you're doing, well, you were kind of in the wrong place. And uh, I dropped out and just did music for nine years. And when I say just did music, that that means that I I played wherever I could. And I remember, uh, you know being so young and crazy or at least young and stupid <laughs> I, uh, I would open the college guide and just book gigs i went to went to a workshop where uh carol p weiss who's a, a a folk musician um was giving a workshop on how to set up tours of college and she said you get the college guide and you get a map and you and i did that and i had no idea what to charge or or what but i ended up you know playing all over the place i played in kansas you know places a long way from home and i, I would just drive everywhere and um, sometimes I'd have quite a bit of time between gigs, um, during which I had no way of making any extra money and stuff. So um, then, then I was, you know, back home uh, teaching guitar lessons and uh, you know doing odd jobs because I didn't really, I didn't really have any skill that that was well paying. So I would just, you know, I remember one one day I did eight hours of Xeroxing, for instance, and that was that was really awful. <laughs> and and. Uh, and uh, you know, commensurately not not very uh, not very profitable, and I would just do whatever I could, you know, clerical work and stuff, going through these temp agencies, and then playing. And um, yeah, eventually, I realized that you know I I couldn't uh, really continue that way, um, and not I, I really I only want to play the stuff that I like, and that's what I've been doing. And you know, if, they, if that's what you want to do, it may be very difficult for you to make a living. So I I uh, I went back to college and, and got a degree in math and computers and that now I do computer programming which um which I enjoy and then which which also you know allows me to make a living which is, for a change which is nice and I thought when I started doing computer programming well this is just going to kill your musical career entirely cuz you know I was used to playing a lot and there were a lot more than I than I have a chance to now anyway where where I'm doing 40 hours a week of commu uh, computer programming except when I have vacation and holiday you know but um, you know, I've been pleased to find that you know, even though I'm not um, obviously you know, rocketing to international fame in, in, in two minutes or anything, or, or even in my whole lifetime, um, I'm slowly getting better and better known, which is what I was doing when I was you know playing and playing and playing. So um, you know, now I just I play when I have time on you know on vacations, um, and I don't even, I haven't even been playing that much lately. It's just you know. If somebody calls me, I, I go there, you know, if I want the gig. Um, but still, I think because of my instructional videos and my albums and such, and uh, 
got a got a real nice review on the Weenie Campbell website of my second album. Um, all, all this stuff helps. Um, and, you know, the internet in general is very good for getting the word out to to people that that are interested, e even if there's not you know huge numbers of them. You know, this music is not really ever going to appeal to the 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 general public, I don't think, in, in terms of, you know, huge numbers. But the followers of it are really, really devoted to it. And on the Internet, if you're really interested in something, you, you can find it pretty easily. And I think that's that's helped a lot as well. So now for over 10 years, I've been doing C++ programming and, and also doing music. And I find it's a good combination. I, I remember how um, discouraging and difficult it was, although also rewarding, when I was, you know, just doing music or quote just doing music because that, that meant I had to do, as I said, odd jobs on the side. Um, but I, I, I find that in general it's, uh, I haven't, didn't really find it was good for me to be just constantly, um, you know, every day getting up in the morning and wondering, you know, which club owner was going to call me back and which wasn't and worried about the next gig and stuff like that. It just... Um, just wasn't wasn't a I mean because most of the most of a musician's life is not spent playing so you're, you're spending a lot of time you know on the phone and you know promoting yourself and I, you know, I'm I'm not really great at that and I, and I don't like it <laughs> so it became um, you know a bit of an unfortunate lifestyle choice which I think it is for a lot of people anyway but if, if you're touring all the time you know then then that gets a little strange too after a while. Um, now I, I feel like it's uh, this, this uh, C plus plus programming stuff is, it gives me a little more balance. You know, I do have a place where I'm supposed to be most days, but I also still have have some time to to pursue uh, the you know the music that I love so much, and um, you know that, that that's been good. I could wish for a little less of the programming. I think that's generally true with a, with any career. You know, you're really interested in it, but maybe there's a few too many hours in the week where you're expected to do it. But um, overall, I really enjoy it, and um, it does leave me free to do, you know, to do some of the music stuff too. There is one thing sure do worry me. There is one thing sure do worry me. My good gal packed her suitcase. Walked off and left for me. Yeah, so I was practicing that all the freaking time. And um, yeah, I remember uh, that, that record. It was an LP at the time, and it was, it was on in my bedroom.